bang what it is everybody i hope everybody is well i've had a couple things happening to me in my personal life in the last couple of months and weeks so it's been a little hectic and i haven't been able to upload and be as consistent as i want to be but no excuses i'm here today and uh, i hope that you find this video insightful and, and i'm sorry for the wait and hopefully those other videos really sat there and marinated and really um, awaken some of you. I know some people have been telling me, oh, I passed, you know, their uh, FTMO challenges. I'm happy for you with all the insight and information. Like I said, you know, this is what helps each other. You know, we, we're here to help each other. We're not here to bash one another. We're not here to try to be better than anybody else. Um, if you're a trader in this community, you know, in the forest community, you know how hard it is and how toxic it can be at times. So we're not here to try to be better than the other person. We're trying to, we're, we're here to make money and help each other. Um, make money if we can um that's the whole point of this right so we're gonna do a nasdaq one shot one cure review and basically um we're gonna pick the highest probability setup this week based on what we saw and you know i'm just gonna put in a little couple of ideas with one shot one kill and um i'm gonna let you guys know some of the things i do when i look for those type of setups and um what were the highest probability setups this week so Let's get started. So obviously here, we're going to start with the risk disclaimer, um, just for the sake that some people don't understand the risk in trading. You know what I'm saying? If you need to read this, read this, pause the video right here and make sure you read this to understand what trading is about. If you just came and you're a beginner to the, to the trading industry, um, just make sure that you read this risk disclaimers. I am not here to give you any financial advice. I'm just a guy who talks on YouTube. Y'all notice. Look at this, though. This is the weekly time frame, okay? So, you know, when I'm doing one shot, one kill, I always make sure that I'm looking at the weekly time frame. Why? Because the weekly time frame, if you know, if you analyze it correctly and you understand what you're looking at, um, you could sometimes anticipate the direction of where the weekly candle should go to. Basically, the draw on liquidity for the weekly time frame. And basically, you have an expectation of where price should go or where the weekly candle should close and, um, you know, where it should draw to. So basically, here we have um, a range. Obviously, we have a trading range from this high to this low right here. And this right here would be your external liquidity. This, this retracement inside, obviously, would be looking for internal range imbalances or internal range liquidity. Obviously, it came to this fair value gap here, and then it sold off from there. And then it took out the external range liquidity here. So now, due to the fact that it already did that, and it kind of already gave us, you know, it did its job on the you know, going back internally and then going out to the external, it's going to go back inside the range to look for more liquidity or more imbalances. Of course, this week we were looking for some liquidity and I feel like coming in the next couple of weeks, we're also going to try to seek these imbalances here, this one here, this one here, and some of the liquidities, uh, some of the liquidity or the highs inside of this here. So, um, Price obviously opened here this week. And uh, as you can see, the power of three, just picture it real quick. Accumulation, manipulation, distribution, power of three. All right. And it was seeking the buy side liquidity and it respected this bullish order block here, or as we call it, propulsion block, because it's sitting on top of an order block already here. Um, and now it's seeking for higher prices due to the imbalances in the internal range liquidity. So let's go on to the next one. This right here is the daily chart. And um, in the daily chart, um, this is just a more magnified, nothing crazy, right? We're just moving down time frames, But as you could see, kind of the same thing here. It's more, just a little more clear. Um, so this right here is the high or the internal range liquidity that we were looking at. And basically, price creates an expansion from here, goes back 
retraces inside for this volume imbalance, goes lower, external range liquidity took here. And then once we complete that, right? Expansion, retracement, expansion. And then we could do a reversal. So then comes a reversal. And we're coming back inside of this. And we're trading inside of this range right here, right? We're trading inside of this dealing range right here. And price kind of, you know, not kind of. It's respecting, you know, how the bodies are closing right here. It's respecting um, this range right here, as well as these lows right here. These wicks come down here, tap this, go higher, and it's doing that. But I want us to pay attention to um, the one shot, one kill setups, right? Um, I could explain what's happening and stuff like that, but I want you guys just to give you guys an idea on how I do about how I go about one shot, one kill. So let's just say that the weekly open happens to be around here, right? And at the weekly open, I realized that, okay, price has been going higher. It's short term, uh, short, no, 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 short term bullish and long term bearish. Yes, but the order flow is short term bullish. So I want to be looking for longs short term. And we already set up the terminus. This was the general liquidity that we had um, in mind. And so basically, when I see that the market opens on Monday, right? And I see that 12 o'clock opens here. Um, basically, I look for where I am in a range or what range am I inside of and what prices or not prices, what PD arrays, so discount arrays or premium arrays, what fair value gaps, order blocks, breakers, mitigation blocks, you know, et cetera. What is inside of the range and where can price trade to and reverse from so if we're opening up in premium right but i want to buy it i want to be buying it in discount correct cool so what i'm going to do is i'm going to wait for a discount rate to be targeted and then i'm expect an expansion from there and then we're going to go for the draw on liquidity right which is obviously 12941.6 this is what we've been we were looking at on the weekly time frame and so if the market opens up here on Monday at 12 a.m., right, what we have here obviously is a trading range, this low to this high. So I'm looking for the PD arrays inside of this range, okay? Inside of this trading range, I'm looking for PD arrays. One, two, three, all these three down close candles create an order block. So this becomes your daily order block. If you want to use this order block, absolutely, you may as well. You can use the opening price to the Wix high right there. But I'm, of course, using these because these three order blocks are um, pretty much embodying this order block. And these three order blocks are, if you put them together, they would have more volume. So in other words, if it was one candle, it would be kind of like this one right here, maybe a little bit bigger, but it would be like this one. And this right here embodies and has more volume than this order block right here. So this is all on YouTube with ICT stuff. So again, I'll criticize ICT. This is none of my stuff. It's all his intellectual property. I'm just here to share what I see. That's all. But um, so right here, we have this order block here. We had the daily fair value gap right here. And notice how the bodies are closing inside of that daily fair value gap. They're literally showing respect or signs of respect of that fair value gap. They do not want to go below it. They're not closing below it. They're literally closing. The bodies are closing inside of it. Okay. So that's speaking a lot. So let's go on to the next time frame, which here we have an hour. And so basically, this is how I frame my um, one shot, one kill. So we already know that. Um, the weekly highs and lows are created 70% 70, 70 of the time. It's created during Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, all right? So if I framed out a higher time frame PD array, such as the daily bullish order block, the daily fair value gap, correct? I'm looking for price to hit these PD arrays, right, as a smart money reversal during Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. 
I want to make sure that if I have a daily order block lined out, I want Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I want price to deliver and, and kind of bounce and show rejection in respect of that level, all right? So I want to see that key level in effect in the first three days of the week. So look at this. Perfect. You have the weekly open right here. Price comes down on Tuesday here to the daily order block and a daily fair value gap. And it's showing this on a respect. The biggest key here is that I want people to understand when you're trading one shot, one kill, you're not looking to catch the low of the week, the high of the week. If you could do that consistently and you know you're you got you you're just consistent with it and you're a killer with it, by all means, do your thing. But if you're just starting, and I would say I don't think, you know, I don't think that majority of the community of ICT traders, let's just I'm gonna put it like this. I would say maybe less than 20% of people are catching the the week, you know, the weekly high and the uh, weekly low in and out, you know what I'm saying? Like week in, week out. Like I don't I don't think many of ICT students are doing that yet. Um, there are some people out there who do do it and, you know, kudos to them, but uh, I'm saying, I'm speaking for the majority of the community. Um, they're not really catching the high of the week and low of the week, you know, week in and week out. So for one shot, one kill, people have this misconception that you have to catch the weekly high or the weekly low. And that is absolutely farce. That's not true. You do not have to do that. The whole point of one shot, one kill is to catch one good setup and be done. So pretty much identifying one good high probability setup and then being done. So trade one day, like trading one day out of the week, get your 50 points, you know, 50 pips, get out and that's it. You're done. All right. So that's literally what it is. It's catching a good portions. It's catching, you know, the, um, the meat on the bone. It's just to make sure that you get enough. All right. And so basically with that being said, you don't have to catch this low right here on Tuesday when it trades into it. Now, if you feel confident and you have a strong conviction that from here, price will reverse and go higher, by all means, do that. If that's your setup, of course. But you got to remember that if you're framing this setup right here, um, number one, it has to be during the time of the day. It already kind of looks like to me that this is not even, this is outside the time of the day when it creates the weekly low. Um, so it didn't even create the low of the week during the AM session or the PM session. After the PM session, it's kind of when it, you know, did this and then it created the low of the week. So, you know, trading here in this candle right here, this would have been low probability. And I would say this would just be gambling because you're trading outside the time of the day. That's exactly why we have time zones, all right? Kill zones, right? That we want to trade in in windows of time. So this right here, um, if you would have caught that, you know, kudos to you. But again, um, I would say this is a more on the low probability side. And also, if you were to trade in, uh, you're trading from, you know, a daily order block, I would, you know, I would believe that you would have to place your stop loss um, below um, the daily order block. Um, so it would be a, a large, a large stop loss, a very large stop loss. And some people aren't willing to do that, right? Um, you know, because some people just like that high, you know, risk to reward ratios. Um, but I'm just pretty sure that if you would have entered off the daily bullish order block, um, you definitely would have had to, you know, open up that stop loss. And that would have not made you comfortable for a lot of you guys. So basically what we have here is price has a smart money reversal here. And then we go up. We have this break on structure here. And then we're going back above and closing back above the weekly open. This is so important because... Once you get this right here, this is a confirmation letting you know, hey, we're bullish. Now we're going full mode and where we want to go. Now we're going to the drawn liquidity. So you could see that this stop point right here on Tuesday after the PM session, this created this bullish run here and this expansion here. So this started that buy program, right? And so once we have this candle in here closing above the weekly open, we have a small retracement and we're retracing back inside this one hour fair value gap, right? And notice how it also uses the weekly open as a key level to reject from. 
So it respects it respects it in a way that it gives off this huge expansion off of it once we you know retrace back into it and reclaim that level. And then it goes boom and just goes aggressively higher. So that setup right there is our first high probability setup. And we're gonna go into that later, but I just want to show you guys just every time you know this happens and you know how to frame a one shot one kill setup. So once we have this right here, we create this imbalance here. Price retraces back inside of this imbalance right here. With this imbalance, we have an order block. This is big, right? We have a previous, a previous high right here, which is Monday's high. And price uses that level as well to pair orders to go long. This right here, is showing signs of bullishness because we're literally creating large displacements above a previous high, a previous day's high, in fact. So this is an important level because it is an area where they're likely to pair orders. All right. And shout out to my guy, Kish. Um, he's been helping me. That's my boy. Um, he's been helping me understand order pairing theory and how it really works. Um, and I've been, you know, just studying like crazy with it. But so basically... Then we have this stop run right here, still inside this one hour fair value gap, and then this expansion higher. And we're gonna get into this. We're gonna get into the smaller, you know, you know, smaller view of it and how it looks like. And then we have this last setup here, which was today on Friday. Uh, this one hour fair value gap price, you know, comes back in here. Once again, we have this order pairing level right here, which is the previous weekly high. And um, price closes above has this huge expansion um and we come back into uh back into it here and then we just go higher if we would have closed above this fair valley gap that would have created trouble but since we didn't these wicks are just going back inside this fair valley gap this is showing signs of buying um obviously it was friday so you're um and you're already if you were to buy this you're kind of buying it not kind of you are buying it well, it's already in premium. And like I said, when you want to buy or when you want to go long, you got to make sure you're in discount because that's the highest probability. All right. That's when the odds are in your favor. So we have set up one here, right? And like I said, we're going to talk about this. So we have here the weekly open. Okay. And we have that one hour fair value gap. As I spoke, this is your first high probability setup for the week. And we're going to go on, on you know, the range of opportunity, you know, what makes this one shot, one kill? So as you guys see it, Tuesday, you get that conf uh, confirmation that Tuesday made the low of the week. And then everything else is bullish once we have that breaking structure right here. And with this candle, we close above. So this confirms it right here. And then we have the weekly open here as a key level. So then we go above the weekly open, close above it, come back down to it. This right here is high probability. And what are we targeting? Well, you could either hold it all the way up to the weekly drawn liquidity, or what you could do is just um, look for previous sessions high, previous uh, daily highs, previous weekly highs, of course. And we have this previous um, daily high right here. So that creates you know a terminus level for you. And then we also have a imbalance right here with an order block. So this right here could have been your target and you would have been done. So now we're going down to a 15 minute time frame with the view of that one hour fair value gap here and what it looks like. So right here in the 15 minute, we have this bullish order block right there. That's why we have this right here. And this obviously is in the PM session. So PM session is from 2 PM all the way out to 4 PM. And price pretty much comes down into there as soon as 2 PM opens and boom, blast off. This is your high probability setup and you're trading it inside of a time window that is high probability. You're trading inside of a kill zone. So like I said, the odds are in your favor. This orange line right here, just to remind you, is the weekly open. And so if you were to draw this out here like this, this low right here is created near that weekly open and you see the rejection on both of those levels. So you have a lot of confluence there to go long. And so this chart is beautiful. 
So just to explain to you guys real quick. So lunch creates a range, right? Before PM session, lunch creates, uh, creates a range. And basically what they're doing is they're accumulating orders inside of here. Longs, shorts, I don't know. But what they are doing is accumulating orders. And basically they created liquidity levels um, before they created a high and a low before the um, PM session open. And so right when we open, right off the bat, we clear this lunch high. And then we come down into this 15 minute order block right there during a time of day, right? This that blue line right there. And we're also clearing the lunch is low. So that's a big thing right there. That's, that's, that's key. All right. Then we're going inside the one hour fair value gap as well. And right here, I just kind of just dragged it over. This is the weekly open level, that orange line. And then price goes above, closing above this fair value gap here. That lets you know that we have shift in market structure. Price comes back down, order block. You could have bought it here. Then we have this huge expansion. Price comes into this fair value gap here. Institutional order flow entry drill. The minute that it comes down into it, boom, you could buy it and ride this higher. And this right here, this standard deviation is a dealing range um, projection. So what is that? What 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 is that? How how am I getting that level? So a dealing range, as ICT describes it, is when a range is uh pretty much takes out two sides of liquidity or two sides of external liquidity. So it took out the buy side liquidity here, and it took out this external liquidity here with the lunch high and lunch low in mind. And so this right here created a dealing range. So what I did was, or what I do is I just simply um, take this range and use the bodies and project 3.5 standard deviations from this range. And you guys are gonna ask, oh, how'd you get this? Like I said, I've just been learning. Um, I'm very cool with a, a guy named Kish. Yo, shout out to Kish, bro. He's really doing his thing. Um, you know, he's really providing a lot of knowledge, even for me, you know, like, you know, I'm a person where you guys might think, oh, you know, he knows a lot more than some other people, but it's not, you know, I'm still learning. I'm still learning from other people. I'm still, you know, trying to find ways to refine my edge, trying to find ways to be more precise, get better with my exit strategies, my entry strategies. And, you know, that's the whole thing. I'm not complacent. So I'm always trying to get better. And, you know, if you're doing that, there's no way that you're going to fail. You're going to be successful in everything you do. So with that being said, if you guys want to go check that out over there um, on his channel, I'll leave a link in the description of that video, that specific video. Um, he has, you know, a great tutorial on ranges and how to project ranges. But just using this idea here, this is a dealing range. So it just cleared out buy side liquidity and sell side liquidity. And we just take that range and use the body. So the absolute highest up close candle here, the closing of this candle right there. And then we're using the down close candle here. And we're using that level as the low and then we're projecting 3.5 standard deviations up because we're bullish. And you could see that price right here, that'd be our terminus or exit. Or this is one way, or you could just hold it all the way to the drawn liquidity of the um, weekly high that we were looking at as the internal range liquidity. And so right here, this is our range of opportunity. We have 260 points. This is the greatest, greatest, greatest range of opportunity that you get. I mean, 200 points is amazing. 100 points is amazing. I mean, 50 points is amazing. So you were, if you're able to catch you know, 260 points from this, I mean, you hit the ball. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You hit that ball out of the ballpark. You're like, that's amazing. That's honestly a great range of opportunity. And this right here could put you up above you know, whatever you're risking, 2%, 3%, 4%, doesn't matter. But this right here is considered a one shot, one kill. And uh, you're catching a good portion of the weekly range, right? And so that is that one right there. So now we have setup number two. Uh, so setup number two is quite the same thing. But the only thing is that instead of using this setup here now, because since we reviewed this one, this would be our second um highest probability setup in the week, right? So you were able to catch this range. That's awesome. But if you're able to catch this range, that's even better. So this right here is the, you know, 
one shot super one kill that doesn't exist i'm just saying that to make it sound more fancy but obviously this right here is the perfect one shot one kill setup as well and basically you're catching the lines portion of the weekly range in the draw and you know in the direction of the draw and liquidity which is the best thing in the world so you have you know odds in your favor this makes everything a lot easier so we have this bullish order block here this expansion here this candle right here and basically when price comes back into it we have this candle's high this candle's low this displacement right here causes an imbalance which is a fair value gap and it creates that fair value gap above a previous day high. That's what we were talking about earlier. So you can see it right there. So they're looking to smart money will, well, they're looking to pair orders at this level simply due to the fact that this candle closed above like this. We created a fair value gap while rating a high. And this creates just a retracement to expand higher, right? So external liquidity. Rating this high, back to internal, external. Liquidity to imbalance, back to liquidity. So this is on the one hour time frame. Now we're going on to the next one. So this right here is the New York SESH high probability setup, right? So notice how the previous setup or the other setup that was inside the fair value gap, you can't see them, the gray lines that I had earlier, but the first setup is this fractal right here. And so this is where we raid the lunch. Lunch is high and the lunch low. And then price goes there. We create that expansion, right? So it creates this data for us here. And we're expanding off an area where we previously expanded from. Mm. Very, very saucy. Um, and then we have the previous day of high here. And basically price stalls all the way up to 930. We clear out this liquidity first here. And then we go lower, creating the stop hunt, order block, and then we run higher. And um, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to show you in the next slide, maybe. Uh, yeah, I think it's the next slide. But you're going to see how we're able to utilize the dealing range to project um, terminus and to get high probability exits. But if you are not comfortable doing that, you could simply just, you know, take your profits or take big chunk off your trade of your trade off at the previous day high. And that would that would also get you in at a good what here we have 450 all the way out to 1260. Uh, what is that? It's like 150 points just from this low right here where the order block is at all the way up to the previous day high. And like I said, this is the five minute time frame. So same idea here. This took out buy side liquidity and this took out sell side liquidity right here. This right here in itself creates a dealing range. Project that 3.5 standard deviations above and it's nearing our terminus level or that weekly level that we're pointing out to, the internal range liquidity, the high, right? And you could see that when we do that, we project it higher, we draw a line. This is the weekly high and where we end the week. And this trade right here, if entered, would have got you 500 points range of opportunity. And so that's very important. So I want you guys to look here. This order block right here creates this expansion. And this expansion creates that displacement, order blocks with fair value gaps, high probability setups, boom. This is literally easy and it's inside of our kill zone. So this is the time that you wanna be trading. Um, those kill zones, you do not wanna be doing it outside of the kill zone. So you wanna look at the AM session or the PM session. If it's not an either or, just don't trade. It's low probability and it's not and it's not, you know, it's not good to do that because what you do is you build bad behaviors in the long run. You know, at first you're thinking it's okay to do this. It's not a bad thing to do this. Um, you know, I made some money. 
you know, and what you're going to do is every time that you break your habits or, you know, I mean, break your good habits and, you know, do bad things, break your rules and you make money off of it, you're going to think it's a good thing. And then you are going to alter the way you have been keeping your habits in check. You're going to alter it just by doing that. You know, um, all it takes is one behavior. And then you doing it again creates a habit. So if you do it two times, it's already a habit because that's a repeated action. It's a repeated behavior, right? Because a behavior is an action. So if you're going to do this, um, please, 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 or you're going to trade ICT style anything, just please make sure that you are trading inside of kill zones. That way you could save yourself a lot of headaches. And you're also practicing good habits, good behaviors that will lead you to success and just ripple into having you you know, abundance with trading. But if you if you just create bad habits, and trust me, I'm a victim of it. That's why I'm telling you guys, learn from my mistakes, be wise. Don't be like me. Trade only inside of the kill zones. It is the best way to keep your capital, number one, in check. So it's the best way to preserve your capital. It's the best way to trade um, with the highest probability. So there would be, it's not that there's not going to be no odds in your favor, but it just increases your chances of being correct. You know, um, you know, making sure that, you know, your trade actually goes to your target. Um, but if you're trading, you know, indices while it's freaking 1 a.m., right, for London kill zone, you know, you're shooting yourself in the foot because that is not PM session, right? Um, I get that there's London kill zone and New York kills and stuff like that, but those are specifically for Forex. When you're doing indices, make sure is that just make sure that you're following protocol and you're going with the AM session in mind and the PM session in mind. Not no New York, London, Asia, whatever you think this is. Just make sure that you are following protocol. That way you have the highest rewards for following the rules. So let's go on with that. And so, yeah, this is just pretty much what I just explained. The dealing range is projected. And what I, you know, for homework, what I suggest you guys do is find a range that rates buy side liquidity, sell side liquidity, or sell side liquidity, buy side liquidity. It takes out both external ranges and creates a dealing range and projected 3.5 standard deviations above or below wherever your drawn liquidity is. Um, and you will find that there is some sort of consistency there. And uh, maybe you'll come up with a discovery. Who knows? And I wanted to end this video with a quote in mind, um, because I know that a lot of people are struggling nowadays with Forex and everything that's going on. And yeah, like I said, you go through life sometimes and some people want to quit. Um, it seems like this week that has passed, a lot of people have been butchered in the markets and some people have been, you know, complaining and, you know, being upset. And the thing is, in reality, you just have to stay positive. Okay. So I have a beautiful quote here from Ed Milet. If you guys don't know who that is, go check him out as well. He's a big, big, big motivational speaker. He inspires other people and he also is aspirational. So other people aspire to be like him um, because he's just a successful entrepreneur. And since we are kind of in that boat, right? Traders, we are entrepreneurs. Um, you know, we, we're trying to create a, a life, a better life for us, financial freedom. So, you know, just to read this right here, strength grows in the moments when you think you can't go on, but you keep going anyway. In other words, um, when it gets hard and when it gets tough, if you keep going at it, keep biting at it, keep picking at it, eventually it's going to lead you to success. Um, mama ain't raised no quitter. Pretty much that's the easiest way for me to say it. Um, I know you guys are just learning. Some of you guys are just learning. Some of you guys just came here. You guys are fresh to the market. And that's the beautiful thing. You guys are fresh. So you guys don't have to. Now, let me rephrase myself a little bit. So if you guys do everything right the way you're supposed to from the beginning, from the jump, you're not you know, creating these bad behaviors. You're not going in there, you know, over leveraging, blowing accounts, not following risk management rules. You're not going in there just trading. Trust me, this right there will literally breed you into a successful trader in a year or two. I'm not guaranteeing this for everybody, but I'm just saying the reason why I feel like most traders don't make it or don't, you know, become profitable and consistent in a matter of a two, three, four year time span or five year time span is because 
they have created so much bad behaviors from the start, and then they have to unlearn those habits and create better ones. And it's that right there takes a lot of time because sometimes you're not aware of your habits, your bad habits. Um, you know, it's sometimes hard to become aware of certain behaviors and you can't even fix it without being aware of it. You know what I mean? So um, that's very important. So if you're coming in this game and you just started, trust me, I know it's hard, but the biggest thing is making sure that you understand. Once you understand the process and how it works, if you have built good behaviors, you will be successful in no time. It may be hard today, but it will be easy tomorrow. And when it's easy tomorrow, you're making all that chicken, all that damn guala. All right. So I wish you guys the best. I know this video was very short, but I hope you guys learned something out of here. There's definitely some things you could take from here if you pay attention um, to detail. Um, but that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you guys have a great day. And uh, let's uh, keep trading and let's stay strong. All right. Good luck, everybody.